and I'm your favorite magic channel, favorite magic channel. Best believe that the professor go bananas for my deck text. I come correct like a porn star, slicing up all these other suckers with my sword mark. What's up? Me wizard, it's Dev, SV and TG. We like it a magic. You know by now at this point we're well acquainted with one another. I like to think that we're comfortable in each other's presence. But anyway, I figured I'd slide in here during these modern uh, Horizons previews to give you a dope little combo deck that's actually also just so happens to be one of the most budget decks we're going to do all season. This thing's only like 25 bucks, but it works like crazy. I'm actually so confident in this deck that I'm going to show you some arena gameplay of this deck a little bit later on this week, but let's go over the deck first. But first, before we jump into it, just general reminder, like the video if you like the video, spread it around to more people, and if you're interested in picking up the deck, hit the first link in the description and go down to tcgplay.com to pick it up, because that is where you're going to get the deck for the cheapest. But, aside from that, I think we can go ahead and push through. Let's talk about this combo first. But first things first, what we're mostly looking to do in this deck is get to six mana and slap down a Command the Dread Horde. Now, Orzov has two things in abundance you know they have decent removal to kill our opponents creatures get them out of the graveyard but we also have plenty of value creatures of our own with like insane into the battlefield triggers that are sweet to repeat with the command the dread horde and get as much value out of the card as possible the card is pretty good sometimes when cast just on its own, especially if you're at a relatively li a high life total. The card is just really good by itself on occasion and refills the board with all the best creatures in the yard and usually just wins the game on its own if you're set up to do so. But why take that damage if you don't have to? Let's be honest. And in case you're wondering how we do that, we're going to play three copies of the Wanderer in the deck. Now, Wanderer's passive ability just allows us to play Command the Dread Horde completely consequence free. We don't take any damage from Command the Dread Horde if we have a Wanderer out. But don't worry, Wanderer's not just in here so we can cast Command the Dread Horde. First of all, you can reanimate the Wanderer with the command. You'll take some damage, but you can if you absolutely have to destroy or exile, really, a huge creature. You know, this is great against Rekindling Phoenix, bigger Hydroid Crasises, dragons and such from Sarkin, Gruul Spellbreakers that got the counter. There's a ton of creatures in Standard <laughs> that this works pretty well against. Even if you're exiling gods and you know they're going to come back, it's still decent against them to make sure you can buy yourself a little bit of time. Its passive ability is also just generally good against mono red decks, you know, keep them off of any burn spells, Vaishina Pyromancer, Goblin Chain Whirler, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> this keeps them off of. You know, they can't like straight burn um, you to death, you know, they have to concentrate on your Wanderer, so it's basically like gaining a little bit of life, which is all you need some of the time to get to the point of the game where you can just take over. You know, even if you never cast the command, you can win this game of magic because we just have a bunch of really good value creatures and some decent removal to go along with them. So we can just play a normal, fair game of magic and win, and sometimes the Wanderer can be a pretty good part of that, because it's removal that'll invalidate all these big creatures that obsolete our guys, and we, we really need that. There's been plenty of games where their Wanderer has just been two-for-one removal against their best creatures on the other side of the table, and it turns out that's a, that's a pretty good magic card right there, even if it does nothing else. Let's take a look at our suite of budget beat sticks here, but don't worry, even though we're squeezing pennies a little bit here, Orzov still has an incredible selection of really decent value creatures that are good not only to play in the first place, but obviously to reanimate with command too. So let's start with four copies of Secret Squire here, and while we're at it, four copies of Dusk Legion Zealot. These aren't the same card or anything, but they both help us churn through our deck faster and get to our combo. We're effectively a combo deck for a lot of intents here, you know? So we want to be able to get the cards that we need to get. We're only playing three Wanderer and two Command the Dreadhorde, so I don't want to play too many six drops that have the ability to kill us and just sit in our hand all game until we can play them, you know. Sometimes Command the Dreadhorde's dead even if you can cast it. So I didn't want to play too many copies of it, so we got to play stuff like this to help us churn through our deck a little bit faster and find our important cards. These are also decent given our budget mana base. Just last thing I want to say about this is that we're not playing, you know, too many isolated chapels, godless shrines, anything like that. You know, we're mostly relying on basics and tap lands and stuff to keep the budget as low as possible in the deck. Well, these will help you find the lands that you need. You know, we're trying to get to at least six lands to pop off in this deck the way we want to. And Secret Squire can obviously help you find those. Dust Legion helps you draw into those. So we get to lower our land count a little bit. And it takes the pressure off of playing so many like tap lands and basics and stuff. So they're good for that reason too. But mostly what we're looking to do with our two drops is extend the game. You know, these will not only draw us cards, but they'll help us block, you know, even get some damage in, like their bodies that also do a thing against control. So you'll draw cards, you'll explore, whatever, and then still be able to get in for damage against control decks. So it's nice to have, 
you know, cards that can sort of pull double duty in that way. Not only do they fill our hands, block when we need them to, but we can get a little bit aggressive with them if we are, if we have to as well. They count as bodies, as does Orzov Enforcer. This really <laughs> enforces, if you'll pardon the turn of phrase there, um, the idea that we want to extend the game. Again, you know, on turn two, this is a fine way to make sure that you're going to get fairly deep into the game. You can block creatures way bigger than it and trade up while still staying up on board presence, you know, even if this blocks like a four mana, you know, five power creature, it's going to kill it and leave you up on board presence with a flyer that can block pretty well too. So just everything about Ors Orsov Enforcer is a four of in a budget deck. Like, if we weren't worried about spending money, we'd probably play Tithe Taker in either this slot or another two-drop slot. But as it is, Orsov Enforcer goes so well to make sure that we can get through the game the way we need to, block the way we need to. Death Touch is really important against stuff like Carnage Tyrant 2. Got to throw that in. Just like so many things that a card like this does. Plus, if you have to, it sacrifices pretty well. And there's a couple of things that we're sacrificing creatures to in this deck. And Enforcer is obviously great if we're trying to do that too. So just so many little niches that it fits into. And it's just a great magic card on its own. We're actually playing three more two drops, a total of 15 two drop creatures in the deck. And one of the reasons that we're doing that is because since we're playing command, we have to play a lot of creatures. We got 29 creatures in this deck. We got to play a fair amount of dudes here if we're going to make command work the way we want to every time. But we can't play too many creatures that are really expensive either, and we'll end up doing a bunch of damage to us if we cast command without a wanderer in play, which it turns out you'll do. Um, on more more than just an occasional basis, you know, there's a lot of games where you'll cast command and just make sure you don't kill yourself and you bring like two or three guys into play. And in those situations, we don't want to bring in like a bunch of four and five mana creatures. <laughs> so we need to play a bunch of dudes like down here on the curve. The only reason we're not playing one drops like Hunted Witness, for instance, is the mana situation. I feel like if we were playing like more untapped sources of different colors on turn one we could probably fit in things like gutter bones hunt witness blah 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 but since we're not we're gonna run the gamut of good two drops in this deck ending on three copies of burglar rat now there's a lot you could do with this slot if you're looking for another two drop creature like a lot you can do <laughs> with this slot but i think i like burglar rat the best even more so than kite cell freebooter in the main deck I don't get it twisted. We're playing four copies of Kite Cell Freebooter and a fourth copy of Burglar Rat, <laughs> all in the sideboard here because we want to punish control as much as possible. But the only reason I'm playing Burglar Rat in the main over Kite Cell is because, again, like I said a second ago, we got some stuff we want to sacrifice creatures to in this deck. A total of six cards. Like the next creature I show you, we're going to have to sacrifice creatures to. And in that case, Burglar Rat is the much better creature just because they won't get their card back when you sacrifice it. And I think that makes all the difference here. And when you get it back with Command, you get rid of another card. That can be cool sometimes too. So really our main focus in the early game is just to extend things and disrupt as much as we can. And Burglar Rat is obviously pretty good at that. If it were any other deck though, Kite Sail would be the main deck thing. But if we're looking to sacrifice things to, say, Plate Crafter, right here, for instance. I think Burglar Rat is slightly better. And most of our two drops go fairly well with a turn three Plague Crafter. You know, Dust Legion Zealot, well, you already got the value out of that. Same thing with Seeker Squire, even though you don't want to sacrifice those. Things like Orzhov Enforcer, obviously great to sacrifice. You know, you get an Afterlife Trigger, get a little 1-1 Flyer guy when you sack that. Even Burglar Rat is another card. You, you kind of already got the value out of it, so you don't mind sacrificing it so long as Plague Crafter is killing something big on the other side of the table. This is also a main deck answer to Planeswalkers, and so like even if it has to sacrifice itself because it's your only permanent when you play it, you'll do that to play a Teferi or something and get around cards like Dobin's Veto and Negate. Playcrafter is actually like kind of at its best right now, and even if you just get it back with Command and it immediately sacrifices itself, sometimes that's a good play too, and depending on what you're facing off against. So Playcrafter is just an immediate four of in the deck. We want creatures that double as removal spells and can pull double duty as removal spells. In in this deck and Plague Crafter fits the bill. But to buff up the two drop slot just a little bit, we're playing two copies of Midnight Reaper in the deck. Again, if we were spending a little bit more money, I might consider more copies of this, but we do kind of have to fear the Reaper in this deck. Again, if we don't have a Wanderer out, this can really make it tough to cast the Command the Dread Horde, so that's like minus synergy there, but plus synergy is the fact that you do have the Wanderer. So if you go like Midnight Reaper, or turn three, into turn four Wanderer, then that's a, that's a good combo in and of itself. You know, you've effectively made it so that Midnight Reaper has no real downside because it can't deal damage to you if you have a Wanderer out. Pretty slick right there, Jack. And it's another thing that draws cards. Again, we're kind of a combo deck. 
So we want things like Secret Squire, Dust Legion Zealot, now this to draw his cards to make sure we can get to that combo in the first place. Midnight Reaper is amazing at that. But into the four drops, because we are playing some four and five drops in the deck, but we do have to be a little bit wary. Again, if we have the Wanderer out when we cast Command, we can just get every creature back from each graveyard. We really do not care. We're not taking damage. Who gives a crap? But just in case we don't, we do have to worry a little bit about our life total. So we can't be just willy-nilly reanimating four drops if we cast Command. But that said, it's pretty nice to be able to reanimate a Basilica Belhan. You know, this will kind of effectively only deal one damage to us. If we can reanimate it with a command and we don't have a wanderer out, this will immediately, immediately gain us back three of that life. But if we do have a wanderer out and we get back a couple of fresh princes, that's like six life. Our opponent discards a couple of cards, like along with Burglar Rat. This is actually pretty decent. You know, we've got a lot of like discard effects against control decks and stuff, but this is a good card against aggro too, which is why I feel like we absolutely have to play it in the deck. It's just not bad against anything and it's always great to reanimate with command aside from that in the four drop slot we're also playing a couple of copies of raichu here ravenous chupacabra might cost a lot of mana end up dealing a lot of damage to us but we don't care just destroy target creature is great the first time we cast it and it's great when we reanimate it too and note that creatures that put creatures into our opponent's graveyards will ultimately benefit us very much if we can actually pull this combo off, you know? Something like Ravenous Chupacabra can come down, kill a thing, you play Plague Crafter next turn, sacrifice your Chupacabra to it, and then when you actually cast Command, you're getting back your Ravenous Chupacabra, killing something else, kill it, getting back the creature you killed the first time, like... These things that are basically like removal on bodies are just double and triple amazing in this deck with the things you can do with them. So even though it costs four mana, it is almost always well worth the sting if we cast Command without a Wanderer out. But to finish off the creatures, the most expensive card in the entire deck, a couple of copies of God Eternal Bantu. I've tried a few things in this slot. At first I was just trying to go as budget as possible and play um, Vampire Sovereign, which is actually a pretty good card, to be honest. That's a, that's a fantastic card. Um, and you could play that in this slot if you wanted to, get the deck down to like a cool 15 bucks, that's pretty nice. Like the play sequence we're looking for is obviously like Wanderer, Bantu, Command. And that makes it so that we can, you know, sacrifice most of our guys on turn 5 to Bantu and just get them right back at no real cost on turn 6 with a Command. Oh yeah, and did I mention it's also a giant menace body that's unkillable? But let's finish off the deck here with a couple of actual non-creature spells that aren't part of the combo. I know it's amazing, but we'll pad out the three drop slot here with a couple of copies of Mortify in the main deck. This gives us an answer against Wilderness Reclamation, Experimental Frenzy, Search for Iskanta, all that. Plus like big creatures. If we don't have a Ravenous Chupacabra or a Wanderer out, whatever, this can take out that Lyra Dawnbringer, whatever you're worried about at the time. So it's an important function of the card too. And if you absolutely need it as a safety valve on turn three because you're taking way too much damage, eh, it does that too. So Mortify, just catch all removal. I feel like it probably should be in the deck somewhere. Most of our removal is on a stick, yeah, and we need to play a bunch of creatures. We pulled that off, so we've got a couple of slots left. I think they're best spent on Mortify, but I'll acknowledge there's a lot you can do with this slot. Now, there are 24 lands in this deck with all the card drawing that we're doing, especially on turn two. We can probably cut a land and it's not a big deal. It hasn't been a big deal so far, at least. You know, we get to six relatively easy thanks to Seeker Squire and Dust Legion Zealot and stuff. Plus, we've got 15 black sources, 13 white sources. With only a couple of white cards in the main deck, that seems like a lot of white sources, but we have to have a couple on turn four to play Basilica Bell Haunt, and it's well worth it to play that card in our deck, trust me. Now, I've already given away a lot of the sideboard here. <laughs> you know, Kite Cell Freebooter is in there, plus the extra copy of Burglar Route. We want to punish Control as much as possible, get those answers out of their hands so that they're naked against our combo when we can finally cast it. Plus, we've got a couple of copies of Duress in there just to round out the discard. Oh, did I mention Davriel as well? Again, we're just coming down hard on Control in this deck, making them discard their entire hand. We effectively turn into a discard deck in games two and three against them. You know, Davriel, keep in mind, by the way, I mentioned this earlier, but you can reanimate Planeswalkers with Command the Dreadhorde, so Davriel can be a nice target if you can fire this off against Control, and just start doing damage to them on board with Davriel, not even having to attack, that's nice, but all of these discard aspects are mostly against slower Control decks and decks like Nexus, like other combo decks, even mid-range decks, some of these elements will come in against, but against aggro decks, we got to have a little bit of flavor, so we're going to take out things like Dusk Legion Zealot and put in Moment of Craving 
That seems obvious. You know, gaining a little bit of life is something we want to be doing in this deck. But we've also got Golden Demise in here. We can actually wrath our creatures, and we do not care, but it's entirely possible we'll have a Send. We're not even wrathing our creatures in the first place. Golden Demise is a little bit better than Cry of the Carnarium, because the last thing we want to happen is exiling all of our creatures. But Cry of the Carnarium turns out very good against us. We shouldn't be playing it ourselves. <laughs> But aside from that, just a couple of copies of D-Spark to finish off the board here, and it's that simple. You know, D-Spark is our version of Disdainful Stroke, and it's also a good way of taking out Wilderness Racks and stuff like that when they do hit the table. So keep that in mind. But mostly, this is Planeswalker removal that's not going to cost us as much as a Veracity's Contempt. That's pretty important. I did consider Spark Harvest in this slot, by the way, but I think D-Spark is just straight up better. Now, if you had more money in the bank and you wanted to really play some good cards in this deck, there's a lot of options. You know, there's obviously like Gideon, Liliana, bringing those back with the Commanded Dreadhorde seems pretty nice if they ever die. So you could play big ticket Planeswalkers like that in the deck if you wanted to, but there's stuff like Tithe Taker and Soren that are only like $3 a piece. That would increase the budget a little bit farther than what I was comfortable with for this deck. But, you know, even if you if you put in Tithe Taker and Soren and like Shalai, for instance, then you're you're still only spending like 50 60 bucks on this deck without the lands and it's well worth it to have some of these powerful cards in the deck let's check out them power rankings real quick a final score of 60 points which is pretty good for a 25 dollar deck you know 60 is sort of just breaching competitive and i have gotten a bunch of games in on arena with this already and won a bunch of games with like worse versions of the deck i told you i was playing like doom to center for a while there <laughs> it turns out still picking up games so you'll see we'll get to arena i think saturday or sunday is when i'm going to be uploading arena gameplay and you'll see man this little budget beater does a lot of work and again it turns out it's just because like look at our power score for instance the power score is real a six doesn't seem super high but for a 25 dollar budget deck that's a relatively high figure usually it's like a f three or four or five you know for these really low power budget decks but orzov gives us a bunch of good removal options removal on a stick like ravenous chupacabra and plague crafter and no one is going to say that those are weak cards basilica bell haunt is always a surprisingly fresh card to be drawing secret squire dusk legion zealot these have been doing work for a while in standard orzov enforcer is obviously a decent card just most of the cards in our deck are actually pretty good, even if they cost like 50 cents or less most of the time. It's like I said earlier in the video, you know, we're playing a bunch of decent value creatures in this deck that can win the game even if we never see a copy of Command the Dreadhorde. Like, we can just play fair magic. You know, play my guy, draw a card, play my guy, play crafter, your dude, Ravenous Chupacabra, that guy away, Fresh, Fresh Prince of Bell Haunt next turn, swing in, suddenly you're dead. Like, fair magic works when you're playing this deck too, so it's kind of versatile in that way. I really want you to give this deck a shot. I mean, at its current price tag, it's pretty easy to do so, but you can cut some of the rares in this deck, like Midnight Reaper, for instance, and really free up a good amount of space. And if you cut Bantu and cut uh, Midnight Reaper for, like, Vampire Sovereign and some random common, like, Deathbloom Thalad or something, you're playing this thing for, like, ten bucks, and it's still a pretty good deck. So check this thing out, give it a shot, and if you want to wait until you see the arena gameplay, until you buy into the deck, I don't blame you at all, but I will be uploading arena gameplay really soon. It's coming up this week, and I've got a lot of faith in this deck, and I've already picked up a bunch of games with it. This thing is the real deal. In terms of, like, how good a budget deck can be, this thing is top of the line. So check this thing out, enjoy it, do the things, hit the link in the description to go to TCG Player and check it out. Like the video if you enjoyed the video, and I'll turn it over to you at this point. How'd you feel about this build of the deck? How would you build the deck differently? You know, even at this budget, there's a bunch of different ways to build the deck. So <laughs> let me know what you throw in, all that, any bits of tech that I miss, blah, blah, blah. So at this point, I'm pretty sure I'm almost done. You know, just do all the YouTube things. I've already kind of told you to do that, but you can also subscribe. There's a ton of content coming up this week. Not only the gameplay, more deck text, but there's Modern Horizon spoilers. I'm working hard this week, so at least view the videos, subscribe, <laughs> hit the bell for the notifications, and if you really want to reward a dude for hard work, go on over to the Patreon. Link in the description or just patreon.com slash spmtg. A lot of incentive. Buck a month. I'll let you vote on what decks you want to see. Let you know what's coming 24 hours in advance. $5 a month, you get those things plus a sign card. $10 a month, you get all those things plus your name in the credits and a deck doctor. I try to I try to put in some work for your money. So get over there. Support me on Patreon if you're comfortable doing so. And I'm pretty sure I'm done for this one. So I'll catch you cats later. I'm dead from the place. Thanks for watching, my wizards. Make sure you spread love and be kind.